Hello, 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 and welcome to this edition of A Quick Pint. Now, what I'd like to talk about today is a response, well, it's inspired by a response to my recent, my last video, uh, which was on the possibility that uh, for some reason autistic uh, females might be attracted to rather older males. And the comment was, um, this sounds like a cope, to be honest. And I replied, what do you mean? Um, either the assertion that I have posited in my video is empirically accurate, or it isn't. To which that person said, uh, still sounds like a cope, and he expanded on it, and I got the impression that what he was arguing was that for a middle-aged man to argue um, uh, that uh, it might be the case that younger women, albeit a subset of them, might be attracted to him, is, is a cope. It's um, not that I was saying they were to me, but but it's 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 a it's a, it's it's a cope. It's a, it's it's a way of of dealing with your middle agedness by coming up with a theory that is um, that reassures you that some young girls might might find you attractive or whatever, and that's how it was a cope. To which I replied again, well, no, hang on, it's either empirically accurate or it isn't. And so this highlights the fundamental problem that a lot of people have with logical thinking, which I want to you know, highlight today, which is the, pro the, the problem of decoupling. And people that are good at logical thinking can decouple. They can decouple their emotions, they can decouple whatever they might feel, they can decouple, which we all have, emotions, motivations, whatever, their biases, their, what, what they want to be true, as opposed to what is true, what feels right being true, as opposed to what is true, and they can decouple the two things, they can logically separate them. Now, you might argue this is actually a kind of autistic trait, and it is. Autistic people do tend to be very good decouplers, they are very, very high in systematising, and this allows them in their reasoning to completely divorce emotional considerations from the reasoning like a robot would or at least a robot that wasn't programmed in a biased way completely divorce emotional uh, uh, consider considerations from the reasoning and, uh, and the, for the problem is it's been it's been shown that uh, ideology and emotion and whatever of course they interfere with the ability to decouple and the majority of people cannot do it and there was a very interesting study on this called um, IDO brackets, IDO logical reasoning, which showed that the majority of people, if you were to give them a, a logical statement like uh, uh, Jack has uh, red hair, uh, all people with red hair have light skin, Jack has light skin, something like that. Then they can do that. That's fine. That's that's a logic they can they can they can cope with that. If you were to say all white people have white privilege, Jack is disabled. Uh, he he um, he he's uh, mentally ill. Uh, he lives on the streets. Uh, he's a drug addict. Uh, he was uh, brought up in care and then and then thrown onto the streets at eighteen and left to fend for himself. Uh, and he's white. And Jack has white privilege. Then they'd say no. Jack doesn't have white privilege. But he does have white privilege. He does have white privilege according to the logic of the, of the system of statements. You, you can't answer anything. If, you, if all white people have white privilege, then Jack, even though I have evidenced clearly that he is uh, very, very underprivileged, he still must have white privilege. That must be the case. And the majority of people, they, they won't. They, they, they get that wrong. And they get it wrong because what you're dealing with is motivated cognition. It's, it's, and it's been shown that, uh, that uh, right-wing people are better able to highlight biases in, and uh, logical inconsistencies in the thinking of left-wing people. And left-wing people are better at highlighting biases and inconsistencies in the thinking of right-wing people. Because what you're dealing with is motivated cognition. That people do not um, conclude things in their view logically, in their view logically, but it's not logical, uh, uh, because they are logically true. They conclude things because they satisfy some psychological need um, and and as uh, as uh, David Hume said reason is and ought to be the slave of passions so what we see as reason in a lot of cases unless you have absolute decoupling is not really reason at all and you could of course see the fundamental problem with that argument what the person engaged in that, that, that didn't like my video or whatever was 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 appeal to motive 
it was it was an appeal ad hominem to say oh this sounds this this sounds like a cope to be honest it was it was ra ra rather than engaging with the logic of the argument and engaging with uh, whether I might be correct uh, this person was triggered I would argue you could counter was himself triggered in some way was him, he, he didn't like what he was seeing for some emotional reason and so he coped with it via an appeal to motive or via an appeal ad hominem and said it sounds like a cope to be honest now of course I, it, it doesn't really get you anywhere because then I could then say to myself oh well what's what kind of person is this why would he not like a video which provided a theoretical model that, w that would mean that um, um, older men uh, would would be sexually attracted to autistic women why wouldn't he like that oh well maybe he's a young man maybe he's a young single man and and, and he can't get a girlfriend and he and it causes a great deal of resentment in him when he sees girls of his age who he feels are you know his group or whatever going for older men he doesn't like that at all that upsets him so i so now maybe that could be true um, it would certainly explain the cognitive dissonance that tends to be uh, underpinned, uh, which tends to underpin any kind of fallacious argument. Uh, and so then we just go on forever with this with this uh, appeal to a motive and, uh, and so on, rather than actually analyse the arguments. And so this is why it's a logical fallacy. This is why you have to engage in decoupling. It's why you, you, you just can't present arguments like that. And also, of course, one could argue the word cope is a fallacy. The word cope is like a shut up word. It's it's uh, you, you don't like what someone's saying. So you, you use this emotional word. Oh, it's just a cope. It's just it's just a cope. Uh, it's it, it's 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 a way it's a, it's a it's a it's a way of shutting down debate of saying, oh, well, there's just something psychologically wrong with you. You're engaging in a cope. And, and therefore you don't actually have to listen to the arguments. So I just thought I, I would highlight that. The, the, the vast majority of people, I think there's over 70% or something in the, in, the, in, the, in the study, cannot engage in logical thinking. They literally can't uh, when it comes to uh, things about which they are biased. They cannot decouple. And this is the fundamental problem, I think, uh, with, that people that cannot decouple, um, which is most people, are now able to publish, they are now able to comment on things. They're now they're on YouTube or on Twitter or whatever, and are, are are able to kind of help via a sort of snowball effect to just create a more illogical society where more people are exposed to more illogic all the time. Whereas formerly, those kinds of people would have had less access to the ability to to publish and to convey their just incorrect, logically incoherent. Uh, views. Uh, it's a serious problem and I think, I think we should think about it. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could live in a society where, where if you make a fallacious argument, we're, we're brought up by the laws of the society, we learn the laws of the society and if we know if we break the laws then we're punished and we go to prison. Wouldn't it be great if we, and therefore we have to suppress our baser instincts, we're forced to do so. Wouldn't it be great if we could have a society where you're brought up to know exactly what a fallacious argument is and you know that if you use it when you're over the age of, let's say, 18, you will be punished. You will go to prison for a year to think about the unacceptability of your argument. I think that would be a, a society that uh, would be wonderful to live in. Hello, hello, hello! The Jolly Heretic is an online public house which meets on Mondays and Thursdays at 7pm UK time, 2pm New York, in which we discuss the kind of based, fearless science which is increasingly expunged from our woke, joke universities. If you would like to help the Jolly Heretic public house, and there are many ways you can do so, please, please, please become one of my patrons on Subscribestar. Also, if you want to, you can donate to the channel uh, using Odyssey and Entropy, and you can also purchase Jolly Heretic merchandise, such as uh, shirts and mugs. All of the links are in the description. Again, I'd be most violently grateful if you could assist the Jolly Heretic Public House, and I will see you all soon, and goodbye!